my comments here. Today I'm joined by my good friend, Neil Magny, the man who gave me the ticket to let me see his last fight in against Ian Gary. Neil, always a pleasure, my man. How are things with you today? No, for sure. Definitely. Different ways of pleasure talking to you. How are you doing? I'm very well. Um, Mike Malott, UFC 297. How are we feeling? I feel great. Uh, the time of this fight is great. I mean, uh, um, having almost 12 weeks to prepare for a specific opponent with a specific date, uh, I feel great. Training camp is going well. Uh, I'm getting pushed day in and day out with my training partner, so uh, I'm feeling really good going into this fight. Uh, obviously going into enemy territory a little bit, check the record today. I know you've had two fights in Canada previously. I don't think either were against the Canadian. I think both against, were against Brazilians, in fact. But you fought Brazilians in Brazil, Argentinians in Argentina, Kelvin Gastelum in Mexico. So how does it feel fighting as the away fighter in, in enemy territory? Um, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it's an opportunity to go out there and win over some uh, new fans. I mean, I know uh, going into the arena, I might be, quote unquote, going to enemy territory. Uh, but I guarantee after the fight, I'll be like, holy crap, Neil Magny, that's the guy I'm, uh, that's the guy I'm rooting for now, moving forward. Uh, and I, I feel like that's how it's been my entire career. I mean, win, lose, or draw. Uh, every single time I go out there and lay it on the line, um, I always leave the fight with more fans going into it. Um, and I see this fight being no different. I've never had the pleasure of stepping foot in Canada, but from what I've heard, they're meant to be some of the nicest people in the world. So what do you anticipate the Canadian crowd reaction would be like when you step in against uh, hometown boy Mike Millot? Um, I'm actually looking forward to it. I mean, uh, based off of the uh, feedback and messages I'm receiving from uh, Canadian fans leading up to it, um, Toronto is a very diverse part of, uh, of Canada. Um, there's, there's a huge uh, Korean population there. Um, there's a huge uh, level of like just different people. It's almost like uh, the Canadian version of New York City from what people were explaining it to me. So it's like a very diverse place to be. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to go out there, um, meeting some new people, earning some new fans, uh, just going out there and having an all around great time. 100%. Well, as I mentioned there, you'll be back in action about six weeks' time against Mike Malott. Um, give me your overall scouting report of your next opponent. What do you think he does well and where do you think areas you're looking to exploit? Um, he's a great opponent. I mean, uh, looking at film, looking at his past couple of fights, he's pretty well-rounded. I mean, uh, he has wins by knockout and submission. Uh, he's a very fast starter, a uh, very explosive athlete. Um, so there's definitely some things that I took away uh, watching film and, uh, and and seeing how he moves and that kind of thing. Uh, so I definitely know I have my hands full going into this fight, but um, this is the kind of matchup that excites me, a guy that kind of um, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, doesn't have uh, very many holes in his game. Uh, it kind of gives me this complex puzzle to go out there and figure out. Um, and, and that's kind of the exciting part going into this fight. It's like, all right, the guy's never lost in UFC yet. He's an upcoming guy. He has a, um, great wins under his belt, uh, amazing finishes under his belt. Um, can I be the guy to go out there and solve the puzzle, uh, so to speak? Um, and that's exciting. That's what I'm excited for, to go out there and be the guy to figure out Mike Malott. Was Mike Malott a guy on your radar before you got the contract? I.e., was this a fight that you thought might be in the works, given, as you mentioned, he's undefeated in the UFC. You've got that top 15 rank and was here. The guy you were looking at is potentially could be next. No, not at all. I mean, at this stage of my career, this phase with the rankings and that kind of thing, I realized that, like, uh, my next opponent can fall anywhere, literally, uh, mm -hmm. from top five, top 10, top 15 to guys that's not ranked or whatever, uh, next up and coming challenger, so to speak. Um, so it, it wasn't a guy that was necessarily on my radar, but it wasn't surprising that um, I got matched up with uh, a guy like Mike Malat. Um, just given where I'm at in my career, just given. Uh, uh, how my last fight played out and that kind of thing. It wasn't too much a surprise that this is the fight off that UFC uh, presented, but um, it wasn't a particular fight that I was necessarily looking for or out of my radar at all. Look, man, you've always been the guy who's, you know, been prepared to defend that top 15 rank, and a lot of guys get into the top 15 and then only want to fight an another guy with a number next to the name. You've always been that guy who's, who's went w when the time was right, has always give that other guy the chance to uh, to break into the top 15 themselves. When you look at Mike and what he's done, are you viewing him on the same level of a prospect as the likes of Shavkat Rahmanov or Ian Gary, who you fought previous? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely a great contender for sure. I mean, the guy, like I said, he's a, uh, he's a tough puzzle to solve and no one in UFC has been able to solve it just yet, uh, so to speak. So definitely um, the work that he's done thus far uh, definitely, like, earns him the right to be able to someone to break into the ranking, so to speak. Um, so definitely not a point I'm taking lightly at all. Definitely a guy who, whom I respect the work that he's done so far uh, in the UFC. I definitely know what he's um, capable of and that kind of thing, just based off of uh, um, what I've seen in him thus far. But um, it's, a, it's a great matchup. It's a great opportunity. It's more so, uh, for me, I'm looking at an opportunity for me to go out there and make a statement more so than what um, he has to bring or what he offers uh, into this fight. Like, uh, like I said, I'm not looking 
past them, not taking them lightly, anything like that. Uh, but more so, it's an opportunity for me to go out there, um, just kind of uh, put my last fight behind me, move forward, and set myself up good for the beginning of the next year. As you mentioned there, let's talk about the last fight, because that was obviously the, I think it was August the 16th when me and you got that time to meet me, done that interview in your in your hotel room back in Boston. Um, but overall, as when we look when we look at the Saturday night against Ian Gary, um, how do you reflect on your over, that overall experience of taking the fight on short notice, and obviously how the fifteen minutes in the cage went? Um, at the end of the day, that's the biggest thing to boils down to just the uh, um, the preparation that goes into the fight. Like uh, um, shortly after that fight, we had some time to reflect. Uh, it kind of when the uh, when the wounds healed, the ego settled down a bit. Um, I made a reflect on that fight and um. One of the biggest lessons or things I'll take from that fight was just um, the effort and work that I put into it uh, or whatever, um, and the results speak for themselves. I mean, um, it was an opportunity for me to take on a fight. It was an opportunity for me to go out there um, and uh, uh, take a chance with something, and I, and I took that chance. I don't regret it at all, but uh, at the end of the day, when I'm getting ready to go out there and fight these um, up-and-coming challengers, these guys that are undefeated, these guys that have all these um, accolades behind them or whatever, um, the number one thing that I need to focus on is the preparation going into that fight. Um, you look at some of the fights that take taking place recently, whether it's uh, Volkanovski's uh, last fight against Islam or uh, Utsin's last fight against Tamayev or uh, most recently Anthony Smith's uh, last fight against uh, Khalil Roundtree. Um, the preparation into the, uh, to go into the fight um, is the most important thing. Like These guys are all great athletes. These guys are all guys who um, can potentially fight for a UFC title again and be UFC champions. But um, the time that they have to prepare for their opponents um, just simply wasn't enough. And um, for me, that was one of the biggest takeaways uh, for me. Is just uh, I'm at a different point in my life now than I was back then. Um, and these short notice fights are just, Something I'd be honest with myself about. It's not just a matter of like, yeah, sure, I'll take the fight uh, based off of the the work that I'm doing in, in the training camp. But um, I have to make sure that I'm pouring literally all my efforts, all my time, or my energy into a training camp to make sure I'm uh, uh, able to uh, favor myself towards success as opposed to throwing up short or whatever. Um, and that was the biggest takeaway at the end of the day. I mean, um, I did not prepare properly for the Ian Gary fight at all. Um, it's by not enemies any uh, an excuse. I mean, at the time I thought. For a while that I was going to win the fight, but uh, at the end of the day, looking back on it, I definitely need to take these fights uh, um, a little bit more serious and uh, really pour some more uh, time into the training camps and preparation. How of interest is that more a mental or a physical aspect? Because obviously, you're taking the fight on short notice, so you haven't been able to prepare physically, but, it, but in terms of mentally, in terms of getting ready and watching that type and studying your opponent, which was the bigger difficulty, the mental or the physical? Um, I think it's more so. Uh, for me, the physical brings out the mental. Uh, for me, it's uh, bringing in the train partners and the guys that are going to, like, uh, make training camp difficult for me. That's allowed me to uh, build my mental. Uh, so I want to bring in the best wrestlers. I want to bring in the best strikers. I want to bring in the best grapplers uh, into my training camps. And training with these guys um, kind of builds that mental for me. Um, and it's a process that you that you can't rush. I mean, uh, when I think of a training camp, training camp is a process that um, has to be forged. When you think of the, the – the process of forging something it's not this like easy delicate process like it, the, the idea of forging something means that you really have to like put it through the ringer whether it's you're, you're, you're forging a sword or forging an injury forging whatever it is that you're you're creating um there's really a process of it like really being very um uncomfortable or whatever uh and for me that's the process that brings out the uh the mental that i need to go, go out there and be successful in the fight um and going into the ian gary fight that just that piece just wasn't there. Like Messi, I felt like, oh, sure, yeah, um, I got it or whatever. But um, I think that was more so uh, an ego approach based off of what I have done in the past, based off what I'm able to do now, so to speak. Um, there was a time where um, I made a – hell, I made a career in the UFC, um, taking five short notice. I fought 10 times UFC in a matter of 18 months, uh, mm-hmm. taking short notice fights. Um, but life back then to life now is completely different right now um at the point now i'm trying to um carve out five six hours a day to go train because of everything else i've going on in life but back then i was literally at the gym all day long morning noon and night it was like hey neil it's time for you to go you've been here since eight o'clock this morning uh go home rest up come back tomorrow so to speak um and right now where my life is at is that personally professionally everything else in between um i'm just not in that state so when it comes to me taking a fight where it comes to me being prepared for a fight i really have have to make sure I go through the process of uh, forging the fighter that I want to show up on fight night, and that entails um, the, the training camp, the training partners, um, and the duration of the training camp to really uh, make sure I'm probably prepared to go out there and execute.
Yeah. And when we look at fight week and we look at the, the Ian Gary build, it was a quite a nasty build, but it was kind of a one-way nasty build. I don't think you said anything nasty to Ian. It was more what Ian was saying about you. And you've talked about the repercussions of that. And we've seen Ian has been very, very public in the news with a lot of things going on from being kicked out of Leon Edwards' gym to the to the Vicente Luque beef to obviously all the stuff with his wife and his family. So from your perspective, how does it feel to now see the fan base perhaps turn on Ian Gary a little bit at, Given, given what happened back in August. Um, if I'm being honest, it's unfortunate. I mean, uh, like I haven't gone through what I got gone through based off of uh, uh, some of the statements and antics that Ian Gary uh, said during fight week. It definitely um, caused some uh, uh, some personal turbulence in my life, so to speak. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, like uh, I have been to take accountability for the things that left my mouth and take accountability for the words that left my mouth. Um, I definitely made statements that he was able to spin and uh, uh, play out in a different word, uh, in a different way than what I have intended to. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, that's on me. I was the one who uh, made those statements, made those statements publicly. How someone else perceived them or spun them, um, that's out of my control. But I kind of um, gave him that opportunity to be able to do so. Um, and I have to own that fact and, um, and live with it, so to speak. Uh, I'm fortunate now that like a majority of that stuff is behind me and it didn't affect me, um, too drastically, uh, when it comes to, uh, my family life and that kind of thing. But, um, it, it's unfortunate to see, it's unfortunate to see someone, uh, uh, personal life be drug up the way his life has been drug up and all the stuff that he has to go through currently. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily wish that on anybody, especially when um, you consider the entire family dynamic and all the uh, um, people involved in there. Like, yeah, him and his wife may have whatever going on, but um, at the end of the day, regardless of what's going on, they share a child together. Um, and that child deserves the um, the right to grow up knowing that he has two loving parents or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's again, again, all this stuff drug out into the media, out in the open, that kind of thing. Um, I don't think anyone is deserving of that, regardless of what they may or may not have done to me. Um, and I'm not going to sit back and necessarily take joy in seeing that play out uh, for somebody. Yeah, no, 100%. Couldn't have said that better myself. Um, from a personal perspective, uh, given what went down, is a rematch something that you would, would look to in the future if that opportunity presented itself? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, for me, it's the it's the competition more than anything. Like, I the the words that that he said were said. Uh, but yet, at the end of the day, uh, what happened is he beat me. <laughs> oh man, that's something that uh is more difficult than anything else to live with, so to speak. It's like, nope. Um, uh, sure, whatever was said was said, but at the end of the day, I lost the fight. So, uh, get an opportunity to be able to go out there, um, and just kind of grow from that experience, go out there and, and test myself competing as a competitor uh, is, the, is the things that I live for, the things that I train for. Um, so regardless of any other nonsense or whatever else it may be, um, getting a chance to compete against that individual again is more so uh, a, a desire of mine more than anything else. And talking about the Mike Meloff fight and just kind of transitioning from kind of the past to future, when you look at this fight coming up, what is kind of the key thing you're looking to get out of it? Is it just to get back on the back in the wing column? Is it to put on a performance to remind people or what, what is the kind of key thing you're looking to get out of this fight in January? Um, the, the biggest thing is the performance and win, like uh, not no, only going out there and getting the job done, but going out there and getting the job done in a impressive fashion. Um, and that's what I've noticed about my UFC career. Like winning is one thing. Uh, winning in impressive fashion is something that's really different. Uh, and I feel like where I'm at now and what I, where I want to go in my career, um, going out there and winning is just not enough. Going out there making a statement is where, uh, what I want to do. Um, so that's what I'm preparing for. That's what I'm training for. That's what I'm um, putting the time in day in and day out in training camps to go out there um, and execute at this point. So uh, for me, that's the, the driving factor. That's the burning desire. That's what um, I want to accomplish uh, in this fight here with Mike Malott. Uh, and that's what I'm staying out to go do here. Um, and it's just uh, it's one of those things. I, I'm putting that pressure on myself to go out there and perform uh, regardless of what happens after the fight, before the fight, whatever it may be. Um, I'm envisioning a perfect fight in my mind i'm going out there um and trying to execute as close as possible to that perfect fight um i was going to ask you about the uh, i think i've asked you this question before about a walkthrough of the perfect fight day but since you talked about the perfect fight in your mind let's let's jump to it um give me a walkthrough in the perfect world what happens when you when you i think i believe the 20th of january when you square off against mike Malott. Yeah, Bert fight against Mike Malad going out there and literally it's one of those points to make make a statement. I mean, uh, even physically, I mean, one of the, I mean, I know everyone says in in in, uh, in training camp, oh, I'm in the best shape of my life. 
I am literally in some of the best that I've been in in the last couple of years. I mean, I'm um, hitting PRs in a gym when it comes to uh, weightlifting. I'm, even, I'm hitting PRs on a track when it comes to um, conditioning and training and running and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm definitely uh, prepping myself to go out there uh, and execute. But uh, in a perfect world, I go out there, get the finish, get my hand raised, uh, and just on to the next. It's literally at this point just business as usual. Uh, nothing personal, nothing uh, – uh, too dramatic, just literally going out there and putting the pace on him from beginning to end, getting the job done, and uh, moving on to the next fight immediately. Saturday night, the welterweight title is on the line in your division, Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington. I think you've said to me once or twice that you would don't anticipate Leon to hold the belt for too, too long, but when you look at this fight coming up on Saturday night, who do you see coming up victorious? Yeah, I mean, I definitely see Kobe being able to pull that fight out just because the uh, he's a very gritty type of fighter, and he's not a guy that's going to um, necessarily fight for the impression of others or the uh, um, uh, opinions of others either. If he needs to go out there uh, mm -hmm. and wrestle Leon Edwards for 25 minutes, he's going to go out there and do just that to get the job done. Uh, he can care less about the uh, uh, crowd's reaction, peers' reaction, things like that. He just knows what it is. Uh, what needs to be done, he'll go out there and get it done, so to speak. Um, and the way that he wrestles, the pressure that he wrestles at, the pace that he wrestles at, uh, I think that might just be a little bit too much for uh, for, for Leon. I mean, um, uh, in recent years, uh, you look at Kobe Covington and uh, Usman's two fights, I mean, those two are literally neck and neck going at it when it comes to uh, skill for skill and that kind of thing. When one decided to break away from um, their core base being wrestling is when the other started to get ahead or whatever. Um, and you watch how Leon's fight played out with uh, Usman when Usman decided to um, mix it up and use his wrestling, how, I don't want to say defenseless, but how uh, in control that fight uh, Usman was against Leon uh, when he decided to open up and strike a bit more and that kind of thing. That's when Leon started to um, inch away and edge away and, and, uh, and start to be able to find uh, success in their fight. So um, I am business by being a very wrestling dominant fight for uh, Kobe Covington. What do you anticipate a, a world in which Colby Covington, a welterweight champion, would look like? Do you think that would be a good thing for 170 pounds? Do you think that would be actually a bad thing? For um, realistically, uh, I think that in the top five in the UFC right now, the top five, top ten, like I think the uh, it's gonna you can I think we're gonna see kind of like the same situation play out with, with the light heavyweight division minus the injuries, where um, the belt kind of plays a hot potato just because mm -hmm. how well matched the, the contenders at 170 pound is now. I mean, you watched uh, Sean Brady's last fight against Kevin Gaslam. Um, you, I, I'm sure he's a guy to do well against Covington, a guy does well against uh, Gilbert Burns and all the other guys in the top five as well. So um, it, a lot of the matchups that are in the in the top five uh, of the welterweight division, I feel like the UFC title at welterweight least to play hot potato for a bit here, um, just kind of bouncing hands for, for a bit there because – um, there are some specialists within the top five, but there are also some guys who are super well around it. I mean, like I mentioned, uh, Sean Brady being able to mix it up with the striking and wrestling and jiu-jitsu to get the job done. Um, you have guys like uh, Ian Gary and Southcott who can really um, exploit the striking and still pull off the uh, submission wins in, in Southcott. Um, so I definitely see um, a lot of uh, hand changes in the near future for the, for the welterweight title. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think that's the best place for us to end. Uh, Neil, it's always a pleasure to ca catch up with you and get some of your time. It was great to meet you in Boston. It really, really was. Wish you the best of luck for, for this sure. fight. Upcoming. Well. And thanks, thank you for the time. Awesome. I appreciate it. Have a good one.